psychicservices.com. Skip and Sharon, hosts of the Psychic Spectrum Radio Show, are a prominent psychic couple. Besides hosting an exciting weekly radio show, they offer fans the Psychic Showcase and a fascinating Speakers Bureau. And their Talking to the Other Side events are not to be missed. Join their live events and even schedule a private psychic reading. Get started at PsychicSpectrum.com. That's PsychicSpectrum.com. Hi, this is Lisa Downs, host of Reigniting You, a new show here on KKNW that explores a variety of topics and timely issues for making mid to late career transitions. I'll be here every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock bringing you guest interviews, career transition advice, and great stories to guide you to what's next in your career and life. Gain a renewed sense of purpose for your next phase with a positive, forward-looking approach. Get ready to be re-energized, recharged, and reignited Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. I'm Nathan Mum, and I'm the host of Tech Time Radio. And we are moving to KKNW starting on October 24th. From Saturdays from 4 to 5 p.m., you can listen to our show live. The hosts cover top tech stories with a funny spin. That's good. So, what, like, Hooked on phonics worked for you, didn't it? <laughs> it did, just a little bit. Grab your weekly technology without having to geek out. Yeah, I can imagine. Only on Tech Time Radio on 1150 a.m. KKNW. We talk technology for the everyday common person. Coming to you live from Studio 6 in Seattle. Keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special co-hosts to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program. The information that's going to make you go, mmm. Now sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time Radio your host, Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm. Yeah, you're looking a little different today. The technology News of the Week. This is for our week, October 31st through November 6th, and it's our 20th episode. Welcome. Happy Halloween, Mike. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing all right. Yeah, I, I dressed up a little bit. I got a little a pirate Jack over here. You need to do a little of this. A little of this. Well, you know, we're going to be drinking whiskey on the show, so that's a perfect setup, it's right? It's not rum. It's not rum, but you know, alcohol tastes really well. Yeah, no there you go. Did you come in? It looks like you came dressed up a little bit too. Is that correct? Uh, what, sure. What, what, is you, what do you have over there? I, I got a sorting hat over there, but uh, it doesn't fit over my headset. It doesn't fit over your headset. Well, we'll have to. Uh, Maybe I'll do it during my mesmerizing moment. Okay. There you, oh, that's a perfect idea. Well, tonight is our freak night of technology. So this is going to be interesting. So we are live on KKNW, 1150 AM. Thank you, everybody that is joining us. Um, we are excited to have you along, and we are excited to have our fans. We have over 600-plus views of last week's episode, so thank you, everybody, keeping, keeping it up and keep on watching us. Either we're entertaining or someone just has it on replay the, <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> um, Somebody is looking at the whiskey. That's right. All right, so we have an hour-long show. We got some whiskey that we're going to be tasting. We have some long hair, and we have some key aspects that we like to do for each of our shows. Normally, we start... Mike, with your question of the day, but my question of the day, we don't have a, uh, I, I didn't bring out the, Where, uh, where's, the, yeah, oh, where they're, they? they're, they're, they're right over there, but my question of the day <laughs> is, what is your favorite Halloween costume you dressed up with as a kid? Uh, death. Did you dress up as death? Yeah. So like, like the Bill and Ted's version of death? No, I, I had a, I had a skull mask and uh, a big, yeah. Like scythe. a cypher, a little scythe, scythe yeah. A, a scythe? Oh, yeah. And when did you when you dress up for that? Oh shoot! Two years ago? <laughs> no, yeah. it was, okay. That was just two years. ago. Just two years ago, the kids come around the neighborhoods and you just go out there and you scare them all. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it is Halloween and we have lots that we're going to be talking about today. We are going to be talking about something that most people don't talk about. We're going to be talking about the dark web. And not Ooh. only are we going to be talking about the dark web, but we're going to take a look at how to get on the dark web. We're going to talk about how to navigate through the dark web, and then we're going to take a look at currently what is for sale on this Halloween night on the dark web. That's so, pretty now, did you know who created the dark web to start out with? The who? United States Navy did. Oh, so did it was they? actually used to pass uh, encrypted data back and forth. So we have the United States military's Navy to 
uh, help us <laughs> go into tonight's episode. So as we talk about some unique stuff, I just want to thank the Navy There's for allowing. A lot of allowing... people going to trick or treat at your house tonight. Uh, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know what? We got some candy ready to go. If they do find us, we live in the middle of no man's land. We got the big bars that are available. So you yeah. just need to go to our house, pull on up there, and you'll get big uh, candy bars. My wife will be there to, to meet you since we'll be here at the show and, and, and busy. But well, maybe I know what I'm doing later. So you can come on over to the house? Yeah, I'll come get a candy bar. Uh, on your way home. All right. So let's start right off into our episode with our top stories in the first five minutes. What's happening in technology? Nathan's top stories in the first five minutes. All right, right out of the box. We're going to start with our top stories in five minutes. We'll let the timer start now, David. Thank you very much. Story number one. This comes to us from a fan. Yeah. All right. This is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. Mike, I had forwarded it. So he's it. <laughs> so if you have a story to share at any time, especially about Facebook, since Mike just loves Facebook, send it to us at press at techtimeradio.com and I'll make sure to read your uh, question or ask your question in one of our stories of the day. So, uh, Mark, thank you for this uh, article. It was Facebook Lifts Band in Newfoundland's Advertisement for seeds. All right. Facebook no. has lifted a ban on Newfoundland's advertisement as Facebook first declared that it was inappropriate. Facebook has reversed its decision to prevent a seed company in Newfoundland from using a photo of a pile of onions, which the social media giant had deemed overtly sexual. Yeah, because that's what happens when I go to the grocery store. So they're just they're just onions sitting in a bucket. <laughs> I know. But in their in their process of doing and like, taking a look, they, it was deemed inappropriate for sexual content. Uh, Jackson right. McLean, the manager of Gay's Seed Company in St. John, says Facebook finally approved the online advertisement today after he asked for a review of the ban. McLean says that there was nothing sexual about the ad for a Walla Walla Sweet Onions. A photo of the packaging shows several of the whole onions piled in a wicker basket and a few sliced onions in the foreground. McLean said that there must have been something about the round shape of the vegetables <laughs> that was misconstrued by Facebook's screening algorithm. So uh-huh. the, now they have their uh, review board set up. They just got it set up. So this was probably done before the review board had a chance to, uh, yeah, to take a look at it. I would hope so. It's a good thing they weren't carrots. As we talked about last week, Facebook's banning is under review, and hopefully they will simply get this sorted out. So that's did, story did it, number one. Did it go go to the big review board, the forty person review so board? So this one, I no Beloria. No, board? this one, I, this I think they just got it approved by him saying, you know what, I don't think that this is what it is, and I think they agreed and said, yeah, you're you're, you're probably correct. Yeah. That's- All right, and we're gonna have a picture of that on Tech Time Radio. You can go and take a look at it Sunday morning. So if you want to see a, the picture of the onions, they will all be there. Okay, story number two. Can technology in Photoshop prove that Melani Trump has a body double? So oh, this, yeah. I mean, it's this show, I had so much stuff and I had to cut through stuff. There was so much stuff that you can talk about on a crazy Halloween night. So here's what we got going on. on. People are convinced that Hope Hicks is Melani Trump's body double. The Melani body double conspiracy has returned for the fourth time The Melani Trump body double conspiracy has returned after a photo made the rounds on Friday featuring President Donald Trump and the First Lady boarding Marine One. Mm -hmm. Uh, Melani was sporting oversized dark glasses in the photo, which were reportedly taken um, shots previously on October 22nd. And as Trump headed to the second and final presidential debate, another photo has also gone viral prompting the fake Milani trend on Twitter. The only thing I miss from this administration is them swapping a new Milani Trump, pretending that no one notices like a four-year-old guppy, says Zach Bernstein, who tweeted he has opened up Photoshop and has done a bit-by-bit analysis of Milani Trump's teeth versus Hope's teeth and is really? 100% claiming that he knows that she is taking the body double process for Trump. Okay. Poor gal. Did, did you see the picture? I saw the picture. It, I, I, I saw the picture, and you know what? I think it's 50-50. But 50-50, this is, huh? Yeah, 50-50. But this is a Halloween episode, so we're all going to be talking about conspiracy. So there's conspiracy that Mrs. Trump doesn't want to hang around with Donald Trump. Is that the conspiracy? I don't know. But that wouldn't be I very surprising, yeah, would it? I don't it? know. We can, we can always 
you know, theorize that's what's going on. Or we could say that, you know, he just wants somebody on his side that looks like his wife. That looks like his wife. So it looks like everything's cool. Everything is going to just do this whole traditional family values stuff. Yeah, we got a couple of days. And what's even scarier but, for this episode is that we have the election in just a couple of days. That'll be yeah, an even scarier turnout. You, I know if you look at the, if you look at the picture, um, there are some definite facial features that aren't aren't, aren't the same. Aren't the same. They are the nose. Right. There's a couple other yeah. things. So I think he may have a point. All right, story number three. Before the buzzer goes off, shoo. Comcast says Peacock has nearly 22 million signups. They got For, all the Queebies? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, got a, I got an email from Queeby that said my uh, my subscription service will end at the end of December. Oh, so there is our five-minute bell. So we'll finish the story. I got it in. Comcast's latest earning reports include some official user numbers for Peacock Network. I love the Peacock Network. If you have Comcast, you can contact them and ask for a flex box. Okay, and they have a flex box. They will send it to you absolutely free, and then you can watch the Peacock Network for free. Costs you nothing if you're on their internet service provider services. Yeah, I keep saying I should do that. You got to do that. I so everybody that's yet. listening, if you have Comcast, go and contact them and ask for the flex box. It's a great Peacock Network. So they had 22 million signups since it lost since it launched in July, and it's exceeding its expectations. The clear winners are shows like 30 Rocks. Parks and Recreation, and Saturday Night Live. However, if you do want access to the premium network so you don't get the commercials, you can pay an additional $4.99 a month or $9.99 a month to remove all ads in instant stream. And I, I can handle an ad or two, so I'm, uh, I'll keep on getting the free version of it for myself. All right. All right, so the buzzer went off. Um, that is the end of our stories. The bell has rung and time's up. If you would like to learn anything about these stories, you can visit us at techtimeradio.com and click on the facts section at the end of all the postings of shows. We have the links, URLs. You can take a look at those overly uh, sized onions, and you can take a look at all of that posting first thing in Sunday morning. So absolutely take a look at the, the facts section there. When we come back, we're going to be talking about Protect Yourself Today. It gives us an update on all cybercrime breaches and ransomware payouts. We will also announce our whiskey selection of the day. We got it sitting over here, so we'll get some of that poured out here during the commercial break. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a little whiskey on the side as we return to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host, Nathan Mum. Hi, this is Lisa Downs, host of Reigniting You, a new show here on KKNW that explores a variety of topics and timely issues for making mid to late career transitions. I'll be here every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock bringing you guest interviews, career transition advice, and great stories to guide you to what's next in your career and life. Gain a renewed sense of purpose for your next phase with a positive, forward-looking approach. Get ready to be re-energized, recharged, and reignited Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. Clock. Hello Seattle. How would you like to have immediate and easy access to your live EKG and heart rate data? Your data right at your fingertips and with no need to hook up wires and leads or be strapped to a machine at the doctor's office. The new Pulse device from Vivomi continuously tracks your EKG and displays this data on your mobile phone. Have you ever wondered how your EKG and heart rate behaves when you're exercising at the gym, navigating the stressful demands of the workday, or just getting the kids ready for school or relaxing at home? Now it is easy to check by simply opening the Pulse app. The Pulse device is sleek and low profile and designed to be worn without any straps or wires and is also waterproof so you can use it in the shower or take it swimming. For those serious athletes out there, the Pulse device also plays nicely with existing exercise tracking apps and is Bluetooth enabled for easy pairing. You can free yourself from those outdated strap based heart rate monitors. The Pulse is a different kind of wearable and you can experience this difference by going to www.vivomi.com and ordering your device today. New Advil Dual Action with Acetaminophen fights pain in two ways. Advil targets pain at the source, while Acetaminophen blocks pain signals. The future of pain relief is here. New Advil Dual Action. All right, Mike. We had a little whiskey on the side here as everybody was at commercial break. It's the Davidson Reserve Rye uh, Tennessee Straight Whiskey. It was barreled on 5-27-2015. It was bottled on 10-17-17, and it's a 100-proof single-barrel whiskey. All right. What did you think of the whiskey during that commercial break? It's got a really good taste. 
It's got a really good bite. It's got a bite, doesn't it? It's a little yeah, it's bit a, peppery. A peppery? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I also think that it has a little bit of the uh, uh, it bay leaves or some type of some type of aroma after you're tasting it. That it has a little bit of a, a secondary. So a good whiskey, you kind of taste it first, second, and then you get that third uh, window that comes through. All right. <laughs> so. Oh, that was good reading. Was that pretty good reading? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's right. All right. So uh, we are going to go to our uplifting part of the show, Mike. Yeah. This is where we talk about cyber crimes and criminals, and this is the brief version of it because we're going to get into lots of fun stuff later during the day. We also have, we're going to be talking about conspiracy theories, and we're going to be talking about if you think um, or if you know through these three questions and three areas, if you're prone to conspiracy theory thoughts. So do you do you have any conspiracy theory thoughts that you like to think about? No, I'm not much into conspiracy theory. Did you ever used to watch the X Files? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh so I love the X Files. I and I and I was the kid that I just wanted all that stuff to be true. All the alien stuff. Yeah. I was I was the nerdy kid that did that. But let's move right now into our segment called Protect Yourself Today. Protect yourself today. All right, Miley. Let's start with story number one. Ransomware knocks out voter database in Georgia. All right, so as the election's starting, we have Hall County continues to restore systems. Ransomware attack targeted a database used to verify a voter's signature in Georgia, and the database is still not fully functional. According to the Gainesville Times, a local newspaper, many of the Hall County systems attacked by the ransomware attack have been restored but they haven't been able to do the voter registration signatures. The Doppelpamer Gang, which is a gang of cybercrime individuals, have taken credit for the attack. According to Brett Calloway, a threat analyst for the security firm Emisoft, he said that this is the first successful ransomware attack that has affected part of the election infrastructure. K. Wimpy, a county voter registration coordinator, tells the Gainville Times that despite the problem with the voters' verification database, signatures can still be verified using hard copies of the voters' registration cards. So it's what they're going to have to do with this is they're going to have to open up each of the individual votes. They're going to have to manually tally them and take a look at the signatures to verify Uh-oh. that they are the correct signatures currently at this time. So they have said that not, this will not impact their voting uh, registration. It may delay them, and they will continue to cite and work with uh, legal authorities to see if they can get their systems uh, restored. Mm-hmm. This is about uh, 1,800 residents that are a little bit north of Atlanta that are currently taking care of that. All right. All right. So does that make you feel good? Our elections are already disrupted a little bit. They're by cyber attackers. They're just disrupted by well, everything. By everything. By, by news and misnews. So and... let's take a look at story number two. We right, we're going to stay that. on the election. President Great. Trump's re-election campaign in Wisconsin took a $2.3 million hit from hackers last week. Mm-hmm. The state Republican Party said Thursday. The Wisconsin GOP disclosed in a statement that the hackers targeted and stole from the organization's Trump re-election fund in the battleground state with less than a week to go until election day. Cyber criminals using a sophisticated phishing attack stole funds intended for the re-election of President Donald Trump, altered invoices, and committed wire fraud. The Wisconsin GOP chairman Andrew Hitt said in a statement, these criminals have exhibited a level of familiarity with the state party operations at the end of the campaign to commit this crime. The familiarity included knowing enough about Wisconsin's Republican Party's partners to fake invoices from companies, send them money to the hackers instead of the vendor. So they over-invoiced them and sent them fake invoices that would represent other individuals that they were taking care of. The vendors are responsible for sending campaign mails and making hat for Trump supporters. It said that while the party lost millions for its campaign efforts, it still expects a full capacity to support Donald Trump's re-election. Uh-huh. Uh, well, the, two point, that's not a lot of money in, in, in that realm. In that realm? $2.3 million? No. I, no. Probably not. Probably not on what they spend for all their campaigns. It's probably yeah. a drop in the bucket. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't mind $2.3 million <laughs> if, I, if somebody was just handing well, out cash, yeah, right? If, they're, if we're just talking about straight 
Listing. All right. So listen to this. The hack is a business email compromise, a scheme that's common scammers hack and pose as business partners for organizations uh, and request payments on their behalf. Google and Facebook lost more than $100 million in schemes from 213 to 215 to a Lithuanian man posing as a computer hardware company. So your your buddy Google and Facebook have also yeah. fallen crime See, to the a, same exact a hundred million though a hundred million. That's I the, wonder if they try people in absentia. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if they do e- <laughs> they, either. You think they use the dark web? <laughs> I, I. You know what? It's gonna be interesting because we're gonna be talking about the dark web, and and everybody's always so scared of the dark web, and and the dark web really isn't as scary as you may think. But we're gonna take a look at that. So those are our stories. Um, we are going, is, is that our five minute or did I get through? I got through the five minutes. So you know what? I'm just so excited about getting into this dark web stuff that, yeah, we, you are. that we are going to end that segment because I had so many other things I took care of. What I will tell people is that we are going to be doing some tech time radio unplugged, uh, episodes that will be just released to podcasts that will have all of our information and back end stuff that we do not have time to air on the actual live show itself. So if you want to subscribe to our podcast, you can absolutely go to techtimeradio.com, subscribe to our podcast services, and then you're going to get kind of behind the scenes footage because I do a lot of this prep work and I've decided to keep a lot of that available and just put it out there because some of it's boring, but some of it may be interesting to other individuals. But that is our buzzer. Yeah, there's the buzzer. All right. So, Mike, it looks like the buzzer rang. So that is our time. But when we come on back from our commercial break, (laughs) we have a conspiracy story and a three-step process to know if you're susceptible to conspiracy beliefs in a segment that we call What I Found on the Web. So you want to make sure you absolutely stay tuned for that after this commercial break, and then we will enjoy seeing everybody back. I'm Nathan, and this is Mike Gorday. We got David on our board, and see you after the break. Hello Seattle, how would you like to have immediate and easy access to your live EKG and heart rate data? Your data, right at your fingertips, brought to you by Vivomi's new Pulse Wearable. And with no need to hook up wires and leads or be strapped to a machine at the doctor's office. Whether you are exercising at the gym, navigating the stressful demands of the workday or relaxing at home, check your EKG as simply as opening an app. The Pulse, a different kind of wearable. And you can experience this difference by going to www.vivomi.com and ordering your device today. Ace Hardware is a helpful place with prompt, friendly service and the brand names you know and trust, such as Steel, Scott's, Miracle Grow, Toro, DeWalt, Milwaukee, Yeti, Traeger, Weber, Big Green Egg, Clark and Kensington Paint, Magnolia Paint by Joanna Gaines, Benjamin Moore Paint, Duracell Automotive Keys, and many, many more. When you visit Ace Hardware, you'll be greeted at the door and given the help you need. So come visit us at Ace Hardware in Lake Stevens, Evergreen Way in Everett, and now Stanwood. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. I'm Nathan Mum, and I'm the host of Tech Time Radio. Tech Time Radio is officially on KKNW from Saturdays from 4 to 5 p.m. You can listen to our show live. We are excited to also then rebroadcast our episodes on Thursday morning from 6 to 7 a.m. The hosts cover top tech stories with a funny spin. That's good. Hooked on phonics worked for you, didn't it? (laughs) It Just a little bit. Grab your weekly technology without having to geek out. Yeah, I can imagine. We talk technology for the everyday common person. I feel like we're forgetting something. Let me check. Xfinity Home gives you peace of mind from anywhere with professionally monitored home security built around you. No, I think we're good. Good. So when you're away, you don't have to worry. The tent. We forgot the tent. Except about that. Xfinity Home. Simple, easy, awesome. Hey, look, I found the tent. Get Xfinity Home with no term contract required. Call or click today. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host, Nathan Mum. Mike, during the break, what did you think about our whiskey? Uh, it's it's definitely got a smoother smoother taste after the second time. The second time? The second time, yeah. And you can start tasting more of the... Less of the peppery taste and more of the flavors. The flavors? It's got like a, I don't know if it's a chocolate flavor or a, a banana flavor, but there's some type of a sweeter flavor that's in there that I keep on getting when I when I take my second and third and fourth. Maybe. Leather. Is it leather? Yeah. Is it, okay, maybe it's a leather taste. All right. Well, as we are with our Halloween special episode, ooh, 
Uh, we are going to be talking about conspiracy theories, and so this is a big thing. I, I, I kind of am a junkie to conspiracy. Are, are theories. you a conspiracy theorist? I don't know if I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I like a good conspiracy theory story. So we're going to take a look and see what we have going on. Have you heard of the pandemic hoax by the man named Q? That's leading an army of followers against elite liberals who kidnap and traffic children. No, I haven't heard that. You haven't heard that. Oh, I've heard of the. I've heard of variations of that. So, so that is screaming around on the internet all over that this is happening as a conspiracy theory. Have you ever uh, had a conspiracy theory that Donald Trump is actually an alien? Have you heard of that one? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, 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 I could make that one up on my own. You can make that yeah. up? Okay. So if you ever uh, wondered how we arrive at this point, the explanation is a complex but underappreciated factor. A lot of people are vulnerable to believe in conspiracy theories, even though they are smart. Mm -hmm. Okay. An average person can become enthralled by a conspiracy theory. They may devote hours of their life learning about it, join online groups, and skew their news feeds in favor of all of the content that they read and believe. There are people that believe that COVID-19 was a part of a United States government attack on individuals, that any vaccine will have computer electronics in it and nanobots to take over your uh, body, and there are hundreds of thousands. Is that, is that why the 5G network is so bad? That's what, <laughs> the, the 5G network just still hasn't been rolled out. That's the problem. They still, oh. <laughs> they're still putting on antennas. And so all of these are conspiracy theories. So number one, to know if you are susceptible to a conspiracy theory is um, that you want uh, to believe something will really happen on merits that say that things are different. Um, so after the CIA really did secretly dose unsuspected victims with LSD, President Richard Nixon did cover up the Watergate break-in. Tobacco companies have been known for decades that cigarettes contain cancer-causing chemicals but hide the evidence from consumers. One conspiracy theory is just so exciting to believe because others have been true. Yeah, we want, we want secret knowledge. That is correct. So the number one uh, item here is many people want to consume online content laden with conspiracy theories that make up the discovery of liberation from the status quo. And the key part of this is spending an inordinate amount of time on social media, extreme political sites and news feeds with wild claims and learning secrets that nobody else has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So explain to me, what, 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 is, what is it that we want to have these secret information that nobody else has how does that run through our system uh, it gives us a sense of uh, superiority in some cases it gives us a sense of 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 power it, it gives us it, it feeds feeds some of that ego that needs to stand out from the crowd okay you know? um, we, it's not necessarily narcissists that need this but even even just regular Joe, wants some type of information or something that makes so them having feel that secret little, information yeah, it makes them yeah we're, we're we have this push pull with uh being an individual and part of a group where you know human beings are herd animals yeah in a sense and uh but at the same time we have to stand out so this is one way that we can stand out if i have knowledge that you don't i automatically get to stand out and have some authority over you okay so here's uh number two conspiracy theory <laughs> Theory believers have common traits. Uh -huh. So this is something that they say. So you want to know everything, and now you so you want to be smart, but then you also now want to be connected. So here's what it says: political views matter. Uh, people at both extremes of the political spectrum tend to believe in conspiracy theories. Right. Um, the association with ideology and the conspiracy theories belief that you are a group together working against a common enemy. See, there's that herd thing. That herd, that herd. And scientists research has found association between conspiracy beliefs and certain personality traits are still unclear, unclear, but one thing is clear that everybody wants to belong. Yeah. That's 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 the funny thing about this because when when we're out and about and we're doing things, we want to be like we want to be liked. We want acceptance from everybody else or uh, from certain people, and so we look for those sameness. And if we have something that we can complain about, uh, that can bring us closer together. So that that's that odd push-pull. Okay. All right. So number three, 
Your critical thinking ability needs to be strong. So it seems obvious, but easy to overestimate that most individuals that believe in conspiracy theory are also very strong thinkers, meaning Mm -hmm. that they have a high level of IQ that's able to retain information in people that have a social impact in their thinking ability. People must carefully appraise the information that they come across and listen to experts. They want to become the expert. And so that is trait number three. So explain a little bit on that. Uh, well, there's there's so many factors going on here, right? Uh, one of them is that we tend to thin slice things really quick. We get a lot, of, we get this information, we take, we take quick meaning from it, and then uh, we try to justify it elsewhere. The second okay. thing is that we overthink things which is, I think, what you just said. Yep. Right? Uh, and then we're trying to piece it together into whatever part of our psychology needs that. Okay. That desire to, it was, if it's connection or if it's authority or if it's, if it's what. It, it, and it's a very, it's not, it's not a quick process. It's a very sly process. You don't go, hey, Nathan, the sky is green. And you go, oh, yeah, Mike. It's it's more of a process where I where I would be like, hey Nathan, uh, did you know the sky is really not blue? And then that might cue your questions. Gotcha. And then I will, and if I'm the the person that's trying to get you to per- persuade you, and yep. you, and we like each other, you're going to start listening to me. And there's there's other factors involved, of course. And then I'm just going to move you down that line. See, I just watched this show. It's a conspiracy theory show. Just got done with it on Amazon Prime called Utopia. Oh, what a great show. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a comic book thing. Oh, I watched through all the episodes. Really love it. It's this rabbit guy, and this rabbit's an analogy. This guy does these comics, and these stories really taking a shape of itself. And I just do look back, and I do know that I love conspiracy theories, the aspects. But now, moving from conspiracy theory experts, we should move into Mike's mesmerizing moment mike's mesmerizing moment do i need to put on the hat this is mike's mesmerizing moment okay wizard man now you put on the hat you got the hat ready yes yeah i don't know if that works out really well because my headphones keep keep headphones keep falling yeah okay okay it's your mesmerizing moment so take us away with your mesmerizing you know know, i kind of just did my mesmerizing moment while i was talking about this because you know it's so funny that uh um we're we're very easily swayed by information yep and and part of it is because of our need to to be connected to other people so when somebody tells us something we we may not initially believe it but we also want to believe it because we want that connection and uh these things, these things take powerful plays in our psyche when, when we can agree on things. And part of, the, part of the problem is that when given a lack of information, our brain fills it in. Yep. Our brains create the stories and the narratives. And because of the way our brains are set up, it, the stories or narratives are often negative. So gotcha. it's very easy to, to think that like with JFK's assassination, we don't have a lot of information about why JFK is this huge presence in our in our lives, and so we want to we want to create that narrative about why that happened. Okay. And so we can we can we start. This is where well, this is where these conspiracy theories start because gotcha. why would somebody want to do that? Why you know? And that's part of our survival mechanism. Okay. All right. Well, that I was really helpful, right? That was. That I, was I feel Mike's. Like a wizard. Yeah, well, you are a wizard. That was Mike's mesmerizing moments. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we have our technology insider. We're going to look at the dark web. We have everything from what's for sale on the dark web to first about how can you at home get on the dark web and be secure. So we're going to go through the steps of what it takes for you at home later tonight on this Halloween <laughs> spooky night, getting onto the dark web and enjoying what is uniquely hidden from most of us. So we'll take a, a break here and we'll see you back in a second. Mike, now that we're at a commercial break, what are you doing for that hard to find Christmas gift or Hanukkah gift or something that's for that special person in these next few months? Uh, you know, I have a couple of people that's kind of hard to shop for, so I'm not, I don't know yet. Let's take a look at Wild Gallery. 
W-Y-L-D dot G-A-L-L-E-R-Y. That's right, not dot com, but dot gallery, G-A-L-L-E-R-Y. Wild Gallery is the premier online gallery specializing in Native American art. Hit me. My favorite is After the Storm by Jason Parrish. This art from the Navajo tribe is the perfect picture for my office. Working from home, I'm noticing my art needs to be updated. The pictures of dogs playing poker is not cutting it on my virtual meetings. You know, I really have my eye on the Black Eagle painting by Nakona Burgess, who is from the Comanche tribe. It was painted in 2018. Absolutely. Take a look at the fine art gallery at wyld.gallery for all of your gifts to be shipped within the United States for this holiday season. Yeah, that's great. And we're going to be excited to be talking about them along with one of our gadgets and gear segments. Again, check them out at wyld.gallery. Okay. And you'll be impressed. Wild Gallery is the premier online gallery specializing in Native American art. Your business deserves the same expertise as that of a Fortune 500 company. If you need a CIO level service, why hire a full-time staff member at $250,000 a year when you can get this on-demand service for fractions of the cost? As your CIO on demand, we'll give you the steps you need to take so as to minimize interruption to your business and profitability and provide you and your business with training and education to prevent future attacks. To get an efficiency review for your business today, contact us at www.ee-services.com. T-Mobile and Sprint have merged. Now that Sprint is a part of T-Mobile, we have more towers, more engineers, and more coverage than ever before. This is not just a bigger network, it's a better one. And now you can get an awesome network at an amazing price. Welcome to T-Mobile, America's largest 5G network. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. You know what, Mike? This is an exciting part that we have here. So this is the part that makes you go, mmm, uh-huh. technology news of the week. And we this just had our- part where we need to drink more whiskey. Yeah, we just had some whiskey there. That was, uh, that, you know what? That had a little bit of a more aggressive bite at my, <laughs> my third yeah, or fourth yeah, tasting. I, maybe this is just the perfect one for Halloween because the second one was not as bad, but the third one really knocked me off so, my chair. So it's a, it's a trick or treat whiskey. I don't yeah. know how I'm going to do it. Thumbs up or I, thumbs down. I'm I don't know gonna yet. Do this. You're going to do this. You're going to yeah. be in between. All right. So now we're going to talk about the dark web. All right, so the dark web created by the U.S. Navy is not as scary as what people think, but the dark web does have some key aspects, and we're going to talk about that right now. I have visited the dark web many a times. Um, I have what they not call a surprise. I have an onion site, which is a specific site that is built on the dark web. Mm-hmm. So really the dark web is kind of based and developed um, on what used to be bulletin board services. If you remember back in oh, the yeah. 80s, we'd have uh-huh. a modem and you would get into a bulletin board service. I used to do B- BBSs quite a, okay. quite and a s- bit. So you had to have a special phone number to call into that BBS. And if you didn't know the phone number to call in, you didn't have access. That's exactly the same thing with the dark web. If you don't have an address, because there's no Google search, there's no ability to search for, hey, I want to hire a, a, a hitman killer. I, mean, I, I can't um, hire a hitman <laughs> by going on to Google. Well, no, you can't. In the dark web, you could if you knew exactly where to find that information. But let's talk about the first thing. If you're going to use anything on the dark web, we need to talk about VPNs, which are called mm-hmm. virtual private networks. Mm-hmm. All right. There's a gazillion of them out there, and most of them fail. So let me hurt. Let that's, me. That's add, good to know. Isn't that? Well, and a lot of them have this free service. So if you pay for a free service, then you might as well just be happy giving all your information to China and Japan because that's where it's going. Is that, is that how you pay for a free service? Yeah. So free services make nothing at all. So let's talk about Ultra VPN. It's considered to be the number one uh, VPN service that's available currently right now on the web Ultra mm-hmm. VPN. So if, if, if you look about this information for this company, you will find that it's United States based. And if there's any problems with the Ultra VPN, 
All of the state of California will be applied to any agreement area that has to go through uh, any court services. The United Nations Conventions on Contracts for International Sales of Goods or anything similar law and regulations in the state of California. So Ultra VPN says that they're secure, says that they don't keep any of their information, but clearly outline that if they have any problems with you, they will engage with the state of California. So cross them off your list. Is that, is that, Not somebody you should be using. Is that so California can get some extra well, money? It's probably. So let's go and talk about this great one. Have you ever seen the Norton LifeLock ads that are on commercials yeah. and the Norton Norton Secure VPN? It says that it has a no-log policy. But a big surprise here, digging through the privacy <clears throat> policy, so you have to look at their information, you just can't believe what you read, says that they actually do, in fact, keep logs for things such as subscriber information and mobile device data. So if you're using any mobile device at any time on Norton Secure VPN, guess what? You They're are tracking it. They are tracking it. So let's talk about this other company called IP Vanish. IV, uh, IP Vanish does not collect logs or traffic. However, when you create your account, it does provide that information with your personal email, your billing information, and your name, and submits that to all government channels. So if you're using a VPN <laughs> with IP Vanish, right. then the government that you're working with uh, has all of the information that you're having that. All right, let's talk about another one, VPN by Google One. Now, what the heck? Google's coming out with a VPN service. Why not? <laughs> so the whole idea of why you have a VPN service is because Google tracks your logs to begin you with. Mean my <laughs> so, so you're now going to then you mean, trust you, Google. You mean my um, tab that I can go on and I don't want people to look at? That doesn't the, the, work? The in, incognito tabs? Yeah, or any those? No, yeah, no, none great. of that. All that stuff's still being tracked. That all gets, oh, sent, to your, that all gets sent to your IP uh, provider and your internet uh, base provider. So Comcast has all that information. Now let's go talk about these VPN based providers called UFO VPN, Fast VPN, Free VPN, Super VPN, Flash VPN, Secure VPN, and Rabbit VPN. It's all of them Hong are owned Kong. by Hong Kong companies that immediately they do not, they are, they are absolutely correct. They do not share their data uh, with the government, what they do is they immediately post all your information <laughs> on the dark web. So I can find out everything you're doing with your VPN product for pennies on the dollar on the dark web. So if you're using any of those, you should be shot also. Don't be using anything that says free VPN. No, you're not really giving me a whole lot of confidence here. So, oh boy, now they had 894 gigs of records that were unsecured by a company called Elasticsearch uh, from UFO VPN. And you can just Google it. Google seven no log VPN servers and you'll hit see all the information Sounds and like find all that conspiracy theory. No, it's all available on the dark web. I can buy it right now for pennies on the dollar. So let's talk about the one VPN that I use and the one VPN I would recommend. If you're going to be going on the dark web, you should be using NordVPN. NordVPN does not keep logs of activity. It's a German based company and they delete all of the information. They actually have received requests from third parties such as copyright enforcement agencies and have provided no data to date. So very important. If you're going to be doing the dark web, you should go on up, sign up for NordVPN. It's inexpensive. It's like, I, don't, I think it's like and a Nord buck. It's like a a buck a month if you sign up for a year at a time. It's inexpensive. Get NordVPN and use NordVPN as your provider. NordVPN is the Switzerland of Yeah, VPN NordVPN is, is one of the best out there right now that have not been breached and have not sold their data. Now, let's tech. As you're going to be searching on the dark web, you're going to need to use a browser. Which browser should you use? Okay, so... You mean I shouldn't use Chrome? No, Google Chrome. <laughs> No, I am choking in the mouth with my whiskey on the thought of that. No, Google <laughs> collects your information and sells it. That's how they make their money. Oh, so I would dang. probably not use them to search on the dark web. Microsoft? What, what, yeah, no. I wouldn't. What? I wouldn't. No? Use, no. Not the Edge? No, not the Edge. No, I don't dang care. It. I don't care what they call it. No, Firefox is also not good because of all the add-ons that Firefox has, uh -huh. which is kind of a cool thing. I like Firefox. I use it all the time. It's that, my secondary. That was, that was my second one. Yeah, so so, so I Firefox use Chrome. I, I use Chrome all the time for regular work, and I use uh, Firefox as my second. Safari, no. Uh, Opera is a browser out there, no. Uh, Brave is a browser out there. We talked about it on one of our episodes, and it gives you cryptocurrency. That means they're tracking you. So no, so, that's not, not a good idea. Come on, so <laughs> help me out here, man. So here is what you should use. It's called DuckDuckGo. Duck, 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 Go. Go. Have you ever heard of DuckDuckGo? Yeah, I, I've actually heard an. Uh, 
commercials about uh, yes Go. use duck duck Go. duck duck Go does not track or does not keep any of the files that it has on information so they have had lawsuits that have been asked for logging on duck duck Go, and they've provided absolutely blank logs in uh courts of law so they have been successful on keeping that information all right, so two things you need to have. NordVPN on DuckDuckGo. NordVPN and DuckDuckGo. You need to download. You can download them both. DuckDuckGo.com, boom. You can get it today. You can get it running. And NordVPN is just Google search NordVPN. Now, then there's something else you need, which is called a Tor. Uh-huh. Now, there's many. If you search for a Tor browser, you're going to find 100,000 different Tor browsers. Now, let me just tell you, if you download all those Tor browsers, all you're doing is tracking information on the dark web. So be careful. The Tor browsers are just as bad as VPN people promising that they're secure in what they do. All right? So there is one area that you want, and essentially what a Tor browser does is it encrypts your packet when information enters the network. So uh, unlike a normal packet on the Internet, Tor strips away the packet's header, which is the part of the address information that is learned to use about the sender. So it automatically scraps the packet information header, uh, layer one of your IP protocol if you're in a if you're an A plus certified student learning about networking information, and it also strips out the end packet. So none of that receiving end end information is retained on what needs to be done. There's one place to download your Tor bracket that you should have for this. Okay, so you need NordVPN, you need DuckDuckGo, Duck, Duck, and you're going to go to HTTPS support.torproject.org. Okay? And why is that? Torproject.org is an official Onion Tor bit site that allows you, once you are on your NordVPN using your DuckDuckGo browser, the Tor translates information into an onion secured address. So again, the dark web has these ports of information that are available out there, but it's only available if you can see the items that are there. Mm -hmm. So when we come back from our break, we're gonna take a quick break here. And when we come on back, we're gonna actually take a look and see what is available on the dark web today to purchase for Halloween's great episode after you've loaded these three things up, again, you have your NordVPN, you got your DuckDuckGo, and you go to support.torproject.org, and you download the Tor client. Okay? Great. All right. I so, need more whiskey. All right. So let's take a break, have some whiskey, and then we'll come on back after this commercial. Skip and Sharon, hosts of the Psychic Spectrum Radio Show, are a prominent psychic couple. Besides hosting an exciting weekly radio show, they offer fans the Psychic Showcase and a fascinating Speakers Bureau. And their talking to the other side events are not to be missed. Join their live events and even schedule a private psychic reading. Get started at PsychicSpectrum.com. That's PsychicSpectrum.com. Hi, this is Lisa Downs, host of Reigniting You, a new show here on KKNW that explores a variety of topics and timely issues for making mid to late career transitions. I'll be here every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock bringing you guest interviews, career transition advice, and great stories to guide you to what's next in your career and life. Gain a renewed sense of purpose for your next phase with a positive, forward-looking approach. Get ready to be re-energized, recharged, and reignited Wednesdays at 3 o'clock your business deserves the same expertise as that of a fortune 500 company if you need a cio level service why hire a full-time staff member at two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year when you can get this on-demand service for fractions of the cost as your cio on demand will give you the steps you need to take so as to minimize interruption to your business and profitability and provide you and your business with training and education to prevent future attacks to get an efficiency review for your business today contact us at www.ee-services.com. Ace Hardware is a helpful place with prompt, friendly service, knowledge, and the little things that make a big difference. Service. Selection. Advice. Community involvement. Competitive prices. Convenience. Located near you. And the things you need, such as house keys, lawn and garden, plumbing, electrical, hardware, grills, outdoor living supplies, and even nuts and bolts. When you visit Ace Hardware, you'll be greeted at the door and given the help you need. So come visit us at Ace Hardware in Evergreen Way in Everett, Lake Stevens, and now Stanley. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, 
right, now it's time for our final segment. So this show is going quickly. So there's going to be a lot on the unplugged version that we have going on. So let's review what we have. We got NordVPN loaded on our computers. We have it running first before we decide to uh, go anywhere on the dark web. Okay, we've downloaded the DuckDuckGo client a browser, and then we have downloaded our Tor application that allows us to get in. And again, make sure you do not just look for Tor. Oh, are those your keys? Those are my keys. Those are your keys. To the for, dark web. To the dark web. So we're going to take a look at what is available on the dark web. Now, um, there's some interesting stuff. So I'm going to start just reading down what is available after you've connected. You made sure that you loaded the torproject.org client. Mm -hmm. So that's the third thing that you're going to have to click into, and it's going to load an onion across the screen. And boom, it's going to get you into your browser. And you're not going to know exactly what to do with it because everything is hidden. But the most important page to find is called the Hidden Wiki. The Hidden Wiki. Is that the menu? The Hidden Wiki is available at, listen to the IP address for Onion. It's HTTP, N-Q-I-G-F-Q-R-X-N-K-W-C-Q-M-I-K dot Onion. Okay, got it. Okay, hopefully I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, hopefully I read it into my phone right now. Hopefully I read that quick enough so no one really typed it in. But if you get to the hidden wiki on the dark web, which you can because you find out the site, and once you get on the dark web, you can contact different people. There are services that are available here that are going to be very interesting. Let's take a look at number one that they have. They have volunteering areas that you can decide to volunteer and help out the dark web. So they have nonprofit type of uh, areas that are available. They have financial services. So here's what they have for their financial services. They have banks and Bitcoin wallets. Okay, which everybody... explain that. Okay, so uh, a bank and Bitcoin wallet would be something that you would use to store your Bitcoins um, that you have earned instead of in a, a actual account that is generating, like a stock market like an, account. Like this, an exchange? Yeah, this is this is kind of like a bank. Just, just think of a, a virtual online bank. Okay. They have exchanges, which, again, dark web exchanges normally charge less than the standard exchange. I would never buy a cryptocurrency on a dark web exchange because you don't know who's running the back end and what's going on for that. Um, you can buy credit cards. That's right. If you want to have your own credit card and not be financed through the bank itself, you can actually go on and purchase credit cards okay. with limits that they end up having uh, – Greedo and, and, and what you think on the back end that will actually cover your credit card. So as long as you pay them, you're fine. And if you don't pay them, well, then you may have somebody knocking you, at your it, door. Does the U.S. Navy come to your door? Well, that's not the U.S. Navy. <laughs> Let me tell you, it'll be somebody else. Okay, they have PayPal, debit, and, of course, they have counterfeit money. So right now, if you decided that you wanted to buy a couple $100 bills, the Bitcoin uh, cost for them right now is going for about $16. Really? Yeah. So for sixteen bucks, so for thirty-two get... bucks, I can have two hundred dollars of counterfeit money. Money, uh, and they will send it to your house within twenty-four hours. They Look have this. expedited services. They use Amazon. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> All right. So they also have commercial services for betting, cigarettes. So if you want to buy your underground cigarettes, you can. Um, drugs, electronics, firearms, mm -hmm. gift cards. If you want to buy those, can uh, I get stolen... a gift card for a firearm <laughs> and some tobacco? <laughs> Probably you can. Um, if you need, of course, a false identity. If you decided that you wanted to become Russian, no, and, yeah, that, and, and that's something I could use. Th that's available right now. It's really inexpensive right now. If you want a false identity, they're only going for about thirty-five bucks. Really, thirty-five bucks for a false identity, but it does not come with passport. So it's just false identity with information. The passport option is $169. So there's an upsell on that. That's, that's almost as much as it is to get a passport. <laughs> but this is your fa false identity, though. So you could be George in, from Russia with your, with your James Bond stuff. Yeah. They have okay. hacking and hitman services. So, okay. So if you need someone to hack into I'm somebody's computer. I'm starting to be very concerned about you, Nate. Yeah. Yeah. And if you need Hitman services, I don't know what Hitman services are, but I have played yes, the, you do. the game Hitman services. Well, yeah, so. I, could, I know, I know, I know some services that that, that would work. Hit, Hitman services, and yeah. then other services. So of course they have others. All right, what are you seeing on your list of great things that you saw available on the dark web? Oh, you're gonna put me on the spot. Here. Okay, well I'll keep on going. Yeah, get your next things available. They, of course well, they have. There's gambling. There's gambling. There's also, if you want college transcripts, if you want to get your degree and without going to without college. Without going to college? Yep, they have those available here. And those are pretty inexpensive. They run anywhere between 14 to $16 for a bachelor's degree from Harvard. So you could get a bachelor's degree in law from Harvard for about 15 to 16 bucks. Yeah, this is... That's, that replaces the pulp mills, huh? It does. It does, absolutely. 
So this is what is available on the dark web. We have given you the ability to spend this Thanksgiving, or not Thanksgiving, this Halloween night searching the dark web for all of your great, unique uh, yeah, with all the- life light. <laughs> Uh, uh, items that are available. And with all the stuff you have to do, I don't know. That's right. Okay, so now we have our pick of the day. What do you think of our Davidson Reserve Rye? Are you going to give it a thumbs up? Yeah, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. You're going to give it a thumbs up? Okay. Yeah. And you know what? I am going to give it also a thumbs up also, so that we got two thumbs up. I, I, I don't think it's much of a sipping whiskey, but it's it's got a really great taste. It did have a good taste. Uh, the bite really will knock you on your butt. But it, it absolutely will. So now if you guys want to make sure that you can learn more about the show, make sure that you guys go to techtimeradio.com and sign up for prizes. We have a $200 item available for you and everything, and we enjoyed you on our show. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for Tech Time Radio today. I'm your host, Nathan Mum. Hopefully you enjoyed talking technology and, of course, having a little whiskey on the side. Remember as we leave, Mum's the word. Thank you for listening. If you like the show and want to learn more, please check us out at techtimeradio.com or on YouTube or your favorite podcast service. Just look for Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. The views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of KKNW, its management.